Hello guys and welcome to this first Magic the Gathering video that I'm going to be doing here. Um, so yeah, I'm a huge Magic the Gathering fan, if you don't know already, and I've been playing it for, gosh, how long, about 10 years, something like that. Um, and yes, I've been playing Arena for the last sort of uh, few years, or however long it's been basically available. So I thought I'd just do this first video just showing some of the decks that I've created, uh, some of the ones which um, I've kind of made just personally myself that I've kind of uh, mechanics and ideas and things, and then some that are based off of more renowned kind of famous decks and ones that are kind of the, the, the best ones really that have been in standard and so on and so forth. So yeah, I'll be doing a lot more videos where I'll actually be showing the gameplay. But for now, let's just go in and show you some of the decks that I've made. I've actually ended up making quite a lot of decks. And I keep doing the thing where I make the deck and then go, oh, I can make this even better. And then I have an old one and then I just replace it. So yeah, so on and so forth. So yeah, here you can see. Da -da 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 -da. So um, I was going to kind of do a bit random, really. Uh, I'll show you this one here. This is a, a Vigilance deck that I made. I've actually not really seen many people or really anyone play a deck that's quite like this. I've seen them play with certain cards that are in this. Um, but yeah, this one was kind of born out of a lot of stuff that came through the last few sets. And I suddenly realized, oh, hang on, wait a minute, this could be quite good. So you can see in here that it's basically um, kind of a life gain slash, you know, lots of vigilance in there. Of, co of course, because it's called vigilance. Woo! Um, with some other little things in there as well. So you can see in here that we've got uh, Speaker of the Heavens, which is an amazing card that came from Call 2021. The fact that it's a one drop Vigilance lifelink, and then you can get an Angel as well. Um, once you gain seven or more life, it's an incredibly overpowered card, but it's amazing. Um, so yeah, I've got a couple of them in there, but I'll show you like other decks where this is even more useful in it as well. I've put in here um, a Chainweb uh, Spider, mainly because there's not a huge amount of flying in here, so I just wanted to get something in there that was going to give a bit of you know, defense against flying, and because I love spiders as well. Uh, has the marshals in there, they've been around for ages. Um, I mean, as much as this deck is standard, you know, we're going to start seeing the shift again soon, so a lot of stuff will no longer be uh, in the standard sets, so I'm kind of conscious of that. For now, I'm just you know, using these. Um, but yeah, got some nice sort of one-one counter stuff in there. Ram through, I think, is amazing. Um, there's been loads of cards that are kind of similar to this, where it's like target creature you control deals damage to another, and this and that. I think this is probably the best one that I can see, because um, I'm not a massive fan of the ones that make you fight another creature, because then your creature gets dealt with damage. I prefer ones where your power is dealt damage to that, so you don't have to have any of the side effects. What's great is the fact that this one's also an instant, and the fact that it has tram if it has trample, it deals excess damage. So I think that this is probably one of those best sort of green attack cards that are out there. Uh, the Raptor as well, this is kind of old school card when it enters the battlefield proliferate and vigilance. So this really helps with the one-one counter stuff. Heliod, who's just amazing because he's just great. You know, the fact that you can put one-one counters on and gain life and all that sort of stuff. But that really connects more with some cards I'll show you in a second. Vigilance, so whenever a white creature you control attacks, you gain a life, so that connects to Heliod straight away, so it means, yes, I can get those counters and things. Uh, but mainly, yeah, it was this card that really made me want to build the Vigilance deck. The fact that at the beginning of your end step, you gain a life for each creature you control with Vigilance. So this has been amazing. So I've, I've even had the point where I've had all four of them on the battlefield before, and obviously it connects to that to give more 1-1 one -one counters, and you get the point, basically. Um, and then what also is a prime one to connect is this one here, the Frontland uh, Cat Beast, basically. Uh, the fact that it's Vigilance and the creatures you control with Vigilance have pay one and tap target creature. So I found out that this is actually a bit of a game changer. I've not seen many people actually use it in decks, but you know I've been able to just tap all your creatures on the end of your turn and then just all out attack you, basically. So yeah, it's been pretty amazing. Gem Razor, which I absolutely love, which came from you know the recent sort of um, you know the beast set. Um, yeah, I think it's really kind of overpowered with like the mutate ability and the fact that you can you know destroy target or artifact or enchantment. But you know that is a four four reach trample. I just love, and it's still pretty because you're smashing gems. Um, so yeah, a couple of other things in there really. I mean the big elder which came from the last set as well, which is ridiculously overpowered again for five mana six six vigilance trample reach beast. Get life, draw a card, cook you dinner, leave you in the street, 
my God, wow, okay, love it. And then obviously various bits of land and so on and so forth. So this is kind of like bits of my vision stack here that I've made there, really. So yeah, let's see what other ones I can show you. Uh, mill deck. Um, I created two of these. I created, the, created one that was standard. This one is not standard because I just wanted to kind of go to town. But you could tweak it more because there are enough cards in the recent sets to to make this, um, you know, a standard mill set. But I just wanted to go a bit crazy really with it. So, yeah, I've got the Merfolk in there, the Secret Keeper, um, the Apprentice. So, basically, this deck is just, as it says, it's all about destroying you by getting rid of your lab. Um, so Drown Secrets, you know, um, which is a great card for two mana, I think. And that's co obviously combined with this new sort of Tefiri enchantment that came, which sort of does a similar thing, but when you draw a card, you mill. So that combined with the Drown Secrets is kind of, yeah, you can start losing cards pretty fast. And then I've just added more stuff in there to make you mill more. So you've got the Sage's Row in there. Um, and then you've also got... Um, I mean, Ashok's really important to put in here, just to make sure that I can exile all your stuff so you can't bring it back. Master of Time, obviously, the, the recent Planeswalker, who is amazing also as well. Um, the fact that, you know, he's the first Planeswalker that you can use as essentially an instant, uh, which is amazing. Uh, one of my friends actually pulled a borderless version of this in a draft, and I hated him for it. Um, so, yeah, pretty good. And then I've got his enchantment in there as well. So whenever you draw a card, um, if it's like the second one you draw, blah, 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 draw two cards instead, which obviously links to the tutelage to make you mill more. So, yeah, and then into the story as well, because obviously if I'm making you mill, then I can get loads of card draw here really cheap because it costs three less to cast if an opponent has seven more cards in their graveyard. And then once again, obviously, that connects to the... Um, tutelage to make you mill even more and yeah you kind of get the, the gist there as well uh octopus i love the seed uh the sea dash octopus that just helps to draw more cards if i need to and then yeah this is obviously what makes it even more definitely not standard but he is the mill legendary creature to put in uh, a recent card that came available on here so if you would mill one or more cards you mill twice that many instead um yeah another good mechanic here as well is the lucky clover which was, you know, obviously from the lovely sort of fantasy fairy tale set. And you can see there, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell you can, uh, with adventure, mm. you can copy it. Uh, and that combined with that, amazing. So it makes you get rid of eight. So, yeah, that's my mill deck there, basically. Um, what else have we got here? This dog deck I'm not going to show you because uh, it's tricky. I tried to make a, a, a dog deck that was kind of three-colour, it ended up incorporating a fourth colour into it because I wanted to have the, the recent legendary dog in there, so it's a bit messy trying to create. But yeah. New Sky, the reason I call this New Sky is because I've made multiple white blue decks because they keep releasing new cards in the different sets. But I think this one's pretty good now. So got your one drops, your classic one drops there, and your flash flyings, rally of wings, because you absolutely need that in this kind of flying birdie whatever you want deck uh swift response i think this is a great little instant by the way that came out the last set destroy target tapped creature for a white spell so a lot of these they've done have been like sorceries or things like that or they cost more so the fact this is two mana and an instant i think is really good for a white card this is actually one of my all-time favorite blue instants and i'm gonna be really sad when i can't use it in standard anymore but the fact that I just love the fact that it almost acts like a counter. It's like, oh, you want to target me and my stuff, do you? No, everything's hex proof. And I'll get a little zombie as well. So, yeah. Now, Lofty Denial, this is a recent counter that's came out, which I think is actually amazing, especially for a common card. The fact that obviously it fits perfectly into a flying deck like this. If you control a creature of flying, counter target spell unless they pay four instead, which is mental, really. It's pretty much early on, you're going to always counter stuff. For two mana, so it's it's an amazing thing. Um, in here, obviously, got the sky cat. I love the cat. Uh, gets plus one one for each other creature control with flying, and I can create cat bird tokens. Blah 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 blah. Staggering insight, so I can get plus one one. Life link, draw a card. Uh, recent set, so this has kind of replaced another card that was a blue card. I've actually forgotten what it's called. 
but it was a, a three mana blue card that creature spells with flying cost one less. The fact that this is now two mana does the same thing and an extra ability of gaining one one when flying creatures enter uh, meant that I, the other one was no longer worth putting in. This one was much better. Obviously, card draw, you know, creatures are flying. Uh, this dove in I found works really well in a flying deck. The fact because you can get the thropters in it and you can gain one life. Um, so yeah, I found that he actually works quite nicely in this one. And, you know, his ultimate ability is you can get more cards quite quickly. The eagle classic obviously gets creatures you control a fly and get plus one one. Going to be sad when this is no longer in standard, but yeah, you can see. Uh, love putting this little one in as well. Uh, spells your opponent's cast that target this creature cost two more to cast, so it gives a little bit more sort of protection to my flying creatures. Uh, nice little board wipe in there from recent set. So each player controls a creature with power four or greater, uh, draws a card, then destroy all creatures. Basically, it's the destroy all creatures part you're really focusing at there. Uh, and then, yeah, Elite Guard Mage, who's, you know, it's been around for a while. And yeah, Dream Trawler, which I put one in there, which is pretty mental. I hate it when I fight this in other decks. In fact, it's you know flying life link. You can make it hexproof, make it you know draw a card, make it cook you a bolognese, make it take you on walks. Yes, it's great. And then obviously the respective land in there as well. A bit of variation to give different things. So yeah, that's kind of that one really. Um, what else can I show you? Life Link. This was made off of recent sets. This one is standard. Um, so once again, I, I showed you where the Speak of the Heavens was obviously in that other deck, but he works really obviously well in this one for the life game. Uh, added him with two other one drops here, the Archman Vessel. Uh, in fact, it's a Life Link as well, but he can turn into a demon when you bring him back from the graveyard, which I think is great. Uh, Village Rights is uh, a great little instant. There used to be a different instant version of this. I'm terrible at I'm forgetting all the names, but I'm pretty sure you know which one I mean. But it was like two mana that did the same thing. Quite an old card. But the fact that this is a one mana card that does, you know, sacrifice and draw two is a great response card. Give encounters Griffin uh, Airy. So, uh, yeah, when you gain three or more life this turn, get a Griffin. This is kind of a new big mechanic, really. Um, the ability to sort of gain three life and trigger an ability. So that's really what a lot of this deck is about as well. Hence, got the revitalize in here to gain three life and trigger other things. So a couple of old school cards there. But um, yeah, Helios are back in there. But what I would want to show you is uh, kind of what really makes this special. So this one here, the uh, lovely Vampire Noble. Uh, flying life link at the beginning of your end step. If you gain three or more life this turn, each opponent loses three life. So you can see how that uh, links to the revitalize, and also got the grim dances in there that I can give sort of life link and or death touch or menace three three. So that straight away trick is the other ones. And then also you've got I bought this little thing back as well. It's perfect the fact that it was gain three life, um, but from an old set. So when it enters the battlefield, you discard a card. And then obviously I can trigger my other things. Uh, you know, a bit of removal in there. Uh, and then this, yeah, the, the kind of real main one that has an effect on this. Whenever you uh, whenever you gain life, target opponent loses that much life. And you can give all your creatures life links. So I can really kill you quite quickly by sucking the life out of you. Uh, but what I have seen is the most hideous combination is this card combined with Revenge. Uh, double your life total, and then target opponent loses half their life rounded up. So not only are you going to lose half your life, we're then going to lose another lot of life from the life I'm going to gain. It's basically crazy. So I've seen this as an end game kind of duo of using that and that, basically, and then you're gone. Uh, and obviously, yeah, a bit of board wipe in there. And Sorin, yes, love this one. To give all my creatures life link. Um, yeah, he's been around for a while, this one. But I like him because he's kind of like a mini version of a Sorin's Planeswalker. And they brought back the Baneslayer Angel as well, which I thought was quite cool. It's a very old card, this one. And the Massacre Worm. I actually pulled one of these in the recent draft. Old school card as well, but I'm glad they brought it back. I've just put that in there as a kind of just beast. A big beast to put in there to kind of be like, hey, deal with this. And even in the land as well, I've made sure I put things like Radiant Fountains. Just to give myself more life gain to trigger other things like that, and, and the, the Barons as well. 
and obviously other land that I can kind of use quickly. So yeah, that's that deck really. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just show you, I'll show you maybe one more deck. So this isn't the most tedious. I'll show you which is the been probably the most successful deck over the course of the last sort of six months. Um, and obviously when the standard shifts, um, I think, you know, this this deck will probably have to morph into a new way. I don't know if it will be as, you know, um, powerful. But obviously red, haste, burn stuff always tends to just be, I find, the most effective really overall. Um, and this one I've pretty much had an 80% success rate with every time I use it. I've even beat opponents 10 times in a row with it. Um, there's slight tweaks I've seen people do of this version, of this, this red burn deck. Um, but uh, this kind of red aggro deck, but this this is my version of it, which works really well for me. So obviously putting the champions in there, four of them straight away, really ridiculous, overpriced, overpowered rather, card. Um, the fact that it's like a 1-1 one, one first strike haste, when it attacks you can give another knight plus one, and its equip abilities are three or less to activate, mental. Uh, classic lizard, um, yes, he obviously connects really well with some other, with the this card here, uh, this has been around for ages now, so when this goes, it's going to be a real shame. But whenever a creature you control with power one or less attacks, deals one damage to player or planeswalker, so then that kind of triggers, you can do like three damage with just a lizard. Simple burn, and you sometimes I always think, oh my god, I want to put in those a great, amazing, complicated burn, but sometimes just having something quick and easy that you can kill something with is the best. I find that if I'm going first, in my opening hand, I can get one of them out, or I can get a lizard out. Second turn, I can get, I can burn something. You know, I can generally get these out really quickly within, the, you know, two turns. By third turn, I could lava coil something, which is a great sorcery to deal four damage or exile something. You know, I can plus two attack for an adventure, get him out later on. Got the steamkin in there, which you can, you know, obviously play more red, get more counters, get more mana quickly. Uh, the Harden and the Forge. I've only got one of him in here, actually. I'm surprised I didn't have more, but maybe it's just because I wanted to keep it 60 cards. The Bone Crusher Giant, which is just ridiculous for a three-mana card. The fact that I can burn and then bring him out with a big old 4-3. Acolyte Flame, which just is just amazing to connect with. The Calamity to deal one damage so I can get Haste Elementals out. Legion War Boss to get out Haste Goblins to keep making them. To link to the calamity as well, dealing you one more damage. Light up the stage, it's a great card draw, really. The fact that I can pay it for one, and it's very likely that I'm going to deal you one damage. This I haven't seen many people put into these kind of red decks, but this actually works really well. It is a bit pricey, but it's a great sort of late uh, play thing. The fact that I can deal one damage to each of your creatures, but then they can't block. So I can all out attack you with little tiny one ones linked to that, and I can kill you quickly. Now, obviously. Torbrun in here is the really sort of showstopper in this. If a red source you control would deal damage to an opponent, uh, an opponent or permanent they control, it deals that plus two instead. So you can see where combining like this and the lizard and all these little things, these one ones become suddenly just mental. And I've been able to kill people within five turns, literally, if I get the right cards out. And the Embercleave, which is. I remember when this first this card first came out, and I was like, "Wow, is it okay? This is okay." And, I, and then I started to see how it was used, and I was like, "Oh, okay, this is mental." The fact that you can flash it in really cheap, attach it to something, give it double strike and trample, and ugh, just kill you. And then simple land. I've kept it all mountain, and then just put in two castles, just to boost up my creatures to give them plus one attack if I need to. Um, but yeah, you can see where. You know, everything in here just is quick, does the job, got a bit of card draw, got burn. Obviously, there's not life gain because it's red, but this is not the point about this. The point is just to kill you as kind of quickly and effectively as possible. So, yeah, that is kind of a couple of my decks there that I want to show you that have been really effective. Uh, I'll probably do another one of these videos to show you even more decks that I've made and also do some more videos of me doing some actual gameplay. So, yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, yeah, bye, guys.